So good morning, everyone, and welcome today to today's Ask Auntie, Ask Uncle conversation. It's being held on Indigenous Literacy Day 2022. My name's Leanne Mitchell, and I'm the Manager of Community Strengthening and Social Planning here at Brimbank City Council. I'd like to start off by respectfully acknowledging and recognising the Wurundjeri and the Bunurong people as the traditional custodians on the land of which our municipality sits. I recognise the diversity of our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who contribute to our community and pay my respect to the wisdom of elders past, present and emerging. It's my pleasure to be your facilitator today. And today is Indigenous Literacy Day. It's taking place, that takes place on the first Wednesday of September each year. And the event celebrates Aboriginal culture, stories and languages, while also raising awareness about the educational str struggles facing many Indigenous groups in Australia. Now. I'm going to hand over to Uncle Shane in a moment to tell you more about this important day. But to celebrate Indigenous Literacy Day today, we're proud to bring together for a second time the Brimbank Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Consultative Committee, or BATSIC. The Brimbank staff in um, and Brimbank staff in this Ask Auntie, Ask Uncle event. Uh, BATSIC provides council with advice on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander issues. As, the, uh, as well as the ongoing, overseeing the ongoing implementation of our current and future reconciliation action plans. We also call those RAPs. We held our first Ask Auntie, Ask Uncle session during Reconciliation Week in July, and that hour absolutely flew by with our BATSIC members answering a number of important questions that covered topics such as changing the date of Australia Day, and how and why Aboriginal people use auntie and uncle and what treaty or land rights should look like. There are a number of questions we didn't get to at that time because we ran out of time. So due to popular demand, we're really excited to bring you part two of Ask Auntie, Ask Uncle today. And it's great to have so many of you here and we're really excited to bring you a program jam packed full of interesting questions and answers. But before we start today's conversation, just a few housekeeping um, items to be mindful of. So please do keep your cameras on if you feel comfortable being recorded, because it's so lovely to see your smiling faces. And that will this will contribute to an intimate conversation, Zoom style anyway, um, with our BATSIC members who are here today. And we'll give them a chance to get you to know you as well as you getting to know them. But while you do that, please stay muted. I can see a lot of muted people on already, so that's great. Um, you can, you know, stay muted and still use smileys and thumbs up if you want to interact or cheer someone on. And you can use the Zoom hand raising when you have a question. And there's also the chat function that's uh, enabled here as well. Um, so before, so let's keep moving on today, and it's my pleasure to hand over to Uncle Shane Charles, who will be doing a welcome to country, and also give us a little bit more insight as to what Indigenous Literacy Day is, what it means to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, and what all of us can do to raise awareness about the issues they face faced in accessing literacy. Over to you, Uncle Shane. Thank you. There we go. Thanks, man. Um, how you doing, everybody? Um, first of all, I must pay my respects to my elders, past, present, and future leaders and elders in the room today. We've got Honey, Honey Jane, and we've got Uncle Boots in that, that arrived yet, and we've got Leanne. How you doing, sis? Um, yeah. Anyway, I guess, yeah, look, um, I guess blessed enough to be, um, you know, connected to country uh more importantly i guess local country here local mob you know bunarong and and Wurundjeri. and i guess all my my learnings have been through this what we call this pedagogy of learning from me as an aboriginal person so you know and that compiles in eight ways of, of learning that we have we had a oral history we didn't have a written history i guess so you know today's you know, it's, it's great to have this this literacy day because it's a, it's a new space for us as Aboriginal people. 
But I guess, look, welcome to today, first and foremost, and and um, I hope you get something out of it. I always say, if you ever, you know, you learn something, you must pass that knowledge on. It's a part of that culture of intelligence and sharing that. You know, it's a very important part of our culture as Aboriginal people. So, you know, it's those practices that we have. And I remember, you know, talking about literature when I started in, when I even at school, you know, we didn't have the the Koori story books. There wasn't any. You know, there, or there was the story of, of we were done primitive natives and, and uh, you know, that, that there was this whole colonial lens on story and judgment, I guess, and, and, and you know, uh, literacy that was written about us. You know, as I said, so we were an oral history and relied on country to inform us as one of the pedagogies on how we learn. Also connecting with country, you know, in terms of, of um, you know, your growing up and learning and how your elders were a important part of those storylines to be able to pass them on to you so you can pass them on to your family, you know, so we can educate. Uh, but I guess knowledge was controlled. You can go into a library today and, and you can read as much as you want about the world. You know, in, in Aboriginal culture was you were gifted that knowledge when you were ready to be able to use it, handle it and pass that on. Now, we look at the ways in which we learn as Aboriginal people and what makes us feel safe when we see that visual is, is also a part of that pedagogy of seeing the Aboriginal flag or seeing Aboriginal artwork or Aboriginal faces and posters around the place, that cultural overlay, you know, is important to the Aboriginal spirit and community. It shows that respect and it shows, you know, in every space we have, there's an opportunity to learn a narrative, whether that's a traditional story, whether it's a story about Aboriginal communities, your community today, but it's also those creation stories that our community are coming up with in their artwork, in their storylines. So we have, you know, there was nothing when I was a kid. There's a lot more around today and that push, I guess, you know, to have, you know, to, to push our people into writing it down. You know, I guess it validates through colonial eyes that it's, oh, it's, you know, if you wrote it down, it's, it actually, it means something. But for us, you can't just have the writing down. You've got to have all the other parts to it in terms of that pedagogy on, on how we learn and how people learn. So, you know, I was in a meeting uh, the other day and it was with a heap of architects. And I said, you have the power to connect people back to country, let alone back to my, or to my culture. And how we have that presence inside and out of building, how we have those storylines don't stop because of a door and how that flows in and how we can saturate the city with that storyline you know, in terms of literacy. You know, it's important to keep, um, you know, and provide those opportunities in community where we keep telling those stories, we keep you know, creating those storylines for our communities and our children. You know, and that's saturated. Those resources are important to be shared. And, you know, in, in the library, well, I remember the days when I was in education where we actually went through all the libraries and started to, to identify those books that were just wrong, blatant racist books, you know, about us as dumb primitive natives and started to remove that narrative from the libraries and then injecting the libraries with stories, injecting the library with programs where a community came in and they're an important part of the programming in there, as well as being able to use those. That programming can also transfer right across council or into space, into place, as well, you know, to help community build new resources as well that we could be shared together. You know, to get your stories down in their books. You know. The city of Melbourne was, you know, the first part was, was really good about injecting the, the, the Bush Tucker Gardens. As then the kids learn about plants, medicinal, nutritional, then stories, then the relationships those plants have with the animals and the people. And it starts. So every space, you know, those opportunities. And out of it, you know, we're more, as I said, we're more of an oral, oral community, oral transfer of, of, of knowledge. But it's also, you know, the great resources that are out there. And starting to build, you know, young, strong sister have got some amazing books. You know, a lot of our elite athletes are writing, writing their stories now, you know, children's books or whatever, or literature or, you know, and just sort of partly looking at 
bless him, Uncle, for Uncle Archie Roach's book at the moment. There's so many messages and so many storylines in it. You know, it's, it's for us to be able to keep those storylines going and, and, you know, it, it keeps our spirit strong and it keeps that cultural knowledge, but also that whole pedagogy on how we learn as Aboriginal people. Well, welcome to today, guys. I would have been talk all day. <laughs> but, you know, I guess it, it's about, well, you know, and what, is, what, what does your, you know, council look like uh, through that lens of, well, okay, what sort of literature do we have, you know, being able to utilise I guess, and share those service provider resources of our Aboriginal communities. It's also an important part of council being able to disseminate that as well, you know, and, and these important places that our community are, are finding their, their way to connecting with, you know, are also the spaces of, of the whole pedagogy and how we learn and how you create it. And then there's more opportunity for people to learn you know, and out of that spawns literature, out of that spawns conversation, out of that spawns all sorts of things. Sorry, I'm late, people. Um, thank you. Uncle. Good to <laughs> see uh, Uncle you, And thank you, Uncle Shane, um, for uh, raising our awareness about those um, many issues. And it's really interesting, isn't it, to hear about the oral the oral language history and the written language um, present. So um, really, really interesting issues to um, ponder there as well. Um, I'm, it's just my pleasure now to welcome the Brimbank Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Consultative Committee members who are here to answer um, your questions today. Um, if uh, in, in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture, I'll mention again that it's respectful to call our elders auntie or uncle. So firstly, I'd like to welcome on, um, Uncle Boots. Hello. Great to have you here. And Sorry, thank you. I'm late. No worries at all. You're just on time, actually. Perfect timing. And um, Uncle Boots, will Auntie Joyce be joining us as well? Or will we, no, is she's resting. Just you? Yeah, she sent yeah. me out. Oh. <laughs> Send her, send her our very best, please. Yeah, and, uh, she's the boss. I've got to listen. Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah, we, we that 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 we all know that, right? But uh, and hopefully we'll we'll catch her another time. Um, yeah. Auntie Jeannie, thank you for. Um, can you give us a wave too? Um, Hi great, everyone. Great to have you, Auntie Jeannie. Thank you for joining us again today. And finally, you've already met him, Uncle Shane. Welcome again and thank you for being here today. Um, I can also see we have another valued BATSIC member joining us here today, Leanne Clark. Hi, Leanne. Oh, good day, Leanne. I didn't see you, Leanne. Great to see you. Hi, Leanne. <laughs> Excellent. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'd also just like to acknowledge the land on which I'm meeting today, which is Wurundjeri of the Kulin Nation, and pay my respects to their elders, past and present. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you Leanne. for that. Act. I missed that. <laughs> You're a legend. Thank you. And please feel free, Leanne, to we'd love to hear from you through this session today as well. So wonderful to have you. So now, without any further ado, let's jump straight into the conversation. And before our first Ask Auntie, Ask Uncle session, we put a call out to all of you, our Brimbank colleagues, to send us questions. And today we're going to ask our colleagues who submitted questions and didn't get the chance last time to call them out, um, last time to ask those to call them out themselves. So I'll call out each name. When I do, please unmute yourself and ask your question. And if you have any questions that come to you while we're running the discussion, you can just add them in the chat and we'll try and cover them today if we have time. And if not, we'll find other ways to provide answers later on. And uh, who knows, if there's interest, we might even do a round three of Ask Auntie, Ask Uncle. So aunties and uncles, I will not direct each question to a particular person. So please just jump in to answer as you like. We have, a few, we have a few questions lined up and we've got about 40 minutes. So uh, let's, let's go. Uh, 
Um, I actually work for Department of Education and Training as a career engagement support officer. And in this role, we have around five uh, CASOs in the Brimbank Melton area. Um, a lot of us actually work and engage in the areas of whether it be uh, the schools uh, and kinders. So we also are engaged with the Victorian Aboriginal Child Care Agency Koori play groups. So, um, you know, in that space, I mean, um, you know, of course, Shane had already mentioned Yarn Strong Sister. So there's so many resources that she has for the early years, and that would be a space uh, to access, you know, for those um, wider mainstream type of play groups, I think that would be really valuable. Um, and yes, definitely um, to be able to get elders to come out or uh, respected community members to have a bit of a yarn with the, with the children. Yeah. And I think it's always beneficial if, um, you know, people are actually aware of different significant dates and what they would like to do, but to actually plan it. So not just drop it on someone, you know, <laughs> in, a, in a week or two, but to do some really good solid planning around what that actually looks like. And then people, you know, would be able to accommodate, you know, maybe meeting their needs. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Leanne. It's it's so important, isn't it, to um, sort of have that early interaction and it's a great opportunity that some of us actually didn't have the opportunity to do when we were children as well. So it's wonderful to have that 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 um, being open to us now. Any other aunties? I think to, yeah, I think there's an opportunity there. And I guess when you look at the three pillars of reconciliation is respect opportunities and relationships. So, you know, I would encourage maybe even going to have a look at one of our Indigenous, um, you know, playgroup and kindergarten centres, I guess. Um, but also build a relationship. So therefore, you know, out of that spawns some a connection, a spawns, you know, sharing resources and ideas and and you know, out of that can can be and, and I don't know, moving forward as a part of the the employment strategy, is there an opportunity for, you know, for like in terms of what Leanne said, in terms of that indigenous um, you know, space of, of education to be able to build a relationship even more so with 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 the, the centres, but also that can filter out into the schools as well within the, the area and, you know, land and, and the education mob work across education. So, um, yeah, and I think it's, you know, uh, that building in the relationship is, is also important for, you know, for moving forward. So, and yeah, Lance, in, in terms of the programming, what does that look like and what can, you know, how creative can we be? And I think it is about, you know, having that interaction with community and having community coming in, uh, but also it's about the organisation going out to community and, you know, getting a bigger learning and immersion on, on, on in that space. Thanks, Uncle Shane. So I suppose um, one of the responses to that question too is that if you would like to connect in with an, with an elder, maybe connect in with Jamie Lee Lyons, who's our reconciliation officer, and uh, she'll be able to make those contacts as well. So great, thanks. Shall we move on to the next question? We do have our own um, religions. Um, we believe in God. We do have um, a, a God that, but we are not in, with my people, we're not allowed to say the name outside of a ceremony. So I can't name our God now because we're not in a um, special ceremony. So, yeah, we do have um, those religions and we do believe and our religions. Like everyone else, you know, everyone's different, so everyone have a different religion, everyone have a different God and a name for that person. But it's only one God, as mum used to say. So if that helps your question. Thanks, Auntie. Yeah, to follow on, to follow on from that, you know, we're, we're spiritually connected to everything. 
that, that's you know how our spirit is it's like the avatar without the tail where we have this connection to everything the land the flora the fauna and you're talk your place in the middle of that and yes you know we have this creation where we are create a uh, 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 it's just uh, a mob of creators. Yeah, you know, we have two and a half thousand different creation stories. So, and this is where you know we've been put in the same box as the same people, but we're not. We're all different. We're like nations within nations, mm. and all have very unique storylines and song lines and all those things. So, you know, very important part to connect with country, Mother Earth. My grandmother taught me that. My heart's encased in clay from Mother Earth, so I had to nurture and nourish both. You know, when, when Mother Earth is sick, so am I. That's how deep this connection is of spirit. And when, you know, it, it has that, that ability to heal. You know, if you're off country, you have to go back as Aboriginal people, go back home and re, rejuvenate your spirit. And to be off country for too long is, is weakens the spirit. So there's that whole connectedness, the connection to place and space. You know, I go to places that I don't even don't even know I've been there, but I felt like I have. Family has. I have a connection. There's a spirit there. But also, you know, I was taught my grandparents and, and all those that have gone before us, they're in the trees. You know, they're in the animals. They're in the plants. They're all around us. So it's vital to be there and connect with it and keep that connection strong. That's the, the very thing. The difference, I guess, between co colonials and, and, and culture is that it's a spiritual thing. Uh, and and it's, it's, this is warmth. When you step on countries, it comes up like a grandmother's hug that I get from Mother Earth. And I feel all the crap go down one side and I feel rejuvenated. I feel like I'm home and I feel like I've had a massage for two hours. That's that connection. Strengthening that spirit again. Thanks, Uncle Shane. That's a lovely way of thinking about um, sort of the people who have passed as well. It's a, a, a gorgeous way of thinking. Thank you. And thanks, Auntie Jeannie. Does any, would anybody, Uncle Boots or Leanne, anything else to add or shall we move on? What came to mind for me was very much so the belonging that and the nurturing that we get with our connections to every living element around us. So, yeah, and I love the way Shane put that. Yeah. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Uh, my favourite is through, through what I do culturally with the Aboriginal community, especially the youth, the programs we run, take it back on the country, like Shane, my nephew said, will you get back on a country? You take these young kids out of the urbanised mindset that they're in here rather than marking that you get them out to the bush and through our culture it's by getting the elders from the area where we take them to sit down and explain to them what especially in the bush when they're sitting down and they ask them questions like well, why do we have to come to the bush to do our cultural programs for us to explain that to them, we've got to shove. I walk around and I tell, explain to about the trees and Mother Earth itself. About that bounces back to uh, to me in a sense. And my our religion to our culture is is Earth, Mother Earth. She's our mother. And the resources to our religion and our culture are in the earth, the waterways, the trees, the animals. And I still learn, I'm still learning what, what our culture really means to us and how we, through my uncles who are still kicking, and they explain to me what not to do and what to do with the bush, especially when I'm teaching a young one. 
And I just got to tell them to nurture the voices. Like I do in some of my welcomes, you know, look after the land that you walk on, especially when we're in the bush. They're our life. Trees are the lungs of the earth. That, that helps us that helps us to breathe. The filters the air, they filter the air. And I didn't understand that right up until I started the youth program 20 years ago. So I'm still learning about my culture and who I am as an Aboriginal man. But at the same sense, I tell my young, young ones, even not in the program, I go down over and go around camp and I just take them out camp and then it's great just to get them the feel of the bush. You take about bush, you lay this, my, the bush changes them. They're seven, instead of 17 year old rebels, they turn into a little jelly babies. But yeah, the, that's what culture is to be, educate the young kids and keep an our mob going strong. Fantastic, Uncle Boots, and I know you have a whole lifetime history of doing that, so it, it's really quite, uh, it's, it's really an amazing contribution and a wonderful thing to, to hear about. Um, uncles and aunties, anybody else like to tell us about your favourite Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander ceremony or tradition and why? Oh, mine's the smoking, I guess. Um I guess I was gifted that by Uncle Cole Walker in terms of my responsibility to to perform those um, on country. But what I did, what he taught me was that it's just, you know, doing the smoking and doing the cleansing, it's not just smoke. Uh, and especially the first year of COVID, I was, yeah, probably climbing the walls as we all were, not being able to go home and, you know, sit on the river and connect, wash in the river, like my grandmother said, it flows, the water flows from her veins. So I guess um, I was able to sit in my lounge room and do my smoking ceremony. But what I, the insight I got out of that time was that, that yeah, the narrative that was in the smoke and where it took me and the places that it took me to, like back to the river, back home, back to family, back to all these beautiful places we'd go camping or fishing or grew up as kids or, you know, so it wasn't, yeah, it's not just smoke. And I, you know, I use that now that it, it's not just smoke. It'll take you wherever you want it to. So I, I was able to, you know, to use that as, as you know, it's not only a part of my responsibility, but for my own healing. And, and transferring that knowledge on. So, you know, but yeah, ideally the fire on the river bank, by the river, <laughs> fishing is the complete healing. <laughs> I'm going to share a picture, Uncle Shane. I don't know who, if you, there's a picture of you, hopefully that's come up now doing a smoking ceremony. Um, I felt very lucky to experience a few of yours over the years, but um, this one was from, I think it was from NAIDOC week, actually, not that long ago. So if anybody uh, comes around, came around to that, you might have seen that that ceremony there. And um, hopefully we'll have more too. We'll have more in-person interactions and get to, to do that again. So, yeah, great. Um, Auntie Jeannie or Leanne? Would you like to call anything out for us? Um, for me, like, it's like Shane said, um, going back home, being on, you know, on the on the river and with that, that smoke and ceremony, uh, it all comes back to you from what you've been told over the years and what you've been um, doing with your learning um, time. Like mum used to take us out, um, show us all the, the things that we needed to see what she wanted us to see. So um, education-wise, yeah, it was good. And like, you know, the smoking, the smoking ceremony, especially on the river, it's like it lifts your spirit, you know, and, it's, and it cleanses you. So if you've got anything on your mind that's troubling you, it's gone once you get to that river with that smoking ceremony. Uh, it's good for kids like um, little people, as I call them, 
you know, we used to take them out bush and, and do the smoke and ceremony with them as well. So uh, they thought it was fun and they used to love running through the smoke. So, yeah. Fantastic. Oh, Leanne? Yeah, I was just thinking of a ceremony that it had stopped for around 10 years for particular reasons, but it's called Narakeetan, which is a baby naming ceremony. Um, and that's actually attached to one of our uh, clan stories or nation stories. And just the importance of uh, naming a child in language um, and sort of imprinting from that moment onwards, uh, you know, the strengthening of identity. You know, um, I think, you know, having those connections um, to identity around language is also very important for us too. Um, a lot was taking away, taken away from us, but, um, you know, we were able to still sort of cling on, you know, from what our elders and, and ones before us had secretly told us, you know, because language was not allowed to be spoken um, mm. at all, unless we were punished or particular, you know, restrictions put on us. So, um, you know, being able to actually fulfill our very own ceremonies again and practice our very own ceremonies again, I think, in itself um, is greatly important for us. Yeah, it's beautiful, Leanne. Thank you. And it just reminded me that um, I know that uh, each of you are from different parts of uh, from different parts of countries from different nations. I wonder if um, maybe we could just do a quick whoop around and you could each tell us sort of where you've each come from and where your families are from, because I know yeah. we can hear from here that there's different sort of, you know, religious beliefs and um, sort of slightly different uh, so traditions it'd be great to hear a little bit about your um your home countries and the, the sort of uh, cultural ties there i'm wondering andy Jeannie, could we start with you um yeah i'm a barkindji person from the river people in new south wales western new south wales um we start between uh wilcania and um Burke, like we don't go to Burke, but we, we're more the river people. We're not a big tribe. We're only a small tribe. Um, the majority of our people were wiped out. There's lots of massacre areas of, around Bukenya where I grew up. Uh, Mum used their fishing days to take us to the river and tell us the stories, the Dreamtime stories. The, the, all the language where she taught us um, everything that I know today is from mum when we'd go on the fishing trips. You know, just down from the mission where I grew up, I'm proud to say I'm, I call myself the Mission Gin, um, proud title. And, yeah, so growing up back home, like learning all that stuff, um, my language is different to Victoria and sometimes I don't sort of say things because I come from New South Wales and I don't want to overstep my boundaries in Victoria. So I don't speak a lot of my language except to my kids. Um, yeah, because I'm in someone else's country, I can't do that. And respect for, for them, for the, uh, the people where I'm standing on their country, I don't sort of practice my culture except when I'm with my kids, we don't practice it here, but we talk about it and I'm due to go home. I have that feeling that I need to go back home. So I, I'm the last in my family. Um, I'm the last of nine, nine kids. My other sister passed away six months ago, so that left me standing here. So, yeah. So I, I, I have that pull, that feeling that I have to go back home. So I'll be going home soon. Thanks, Auntie, Thanks, Auntie Jeannie. Um, we'll, we'll definitely miss you when you go home. So, um, and thank you for sharing that, uh, that, that information about your background and your, your stories. Um, Uncle Boots, 
would you mind telling us a little bit about uh, where you come from, your country, please? Uh, yeah, we've got enough time in this program to make you do that, do you? You can give us the short version, uh, maybe. Uh, well, my wife, her mum's Wurundjeri, but we, we go way, way back and we've got the same great, great, great grandmother. And uh, I'm Yorta Yorta tribe on the Murray River. Yorta, I take Yorta Yorta through uh, the Aboriginal LORE law. I've got to take my father's, my father's tribal uh, boundaries, which is the Yorta Yorta clan on Kamagunja Reserve on the Murray River on the New South side, right on the Murray. And... Uh, my mother's side, I go up the river a bit more to Swat Hill and all the way to Romvale and that. I'm the Murray River clan. I've got Muddy Muddy Walk, Wamba Wamba, Latchy Latchy, Yorta Yorta. And they're all my, my uh, mother and father. And going back to my grandparents, on my uh, father's side, he's oh, grandfather. I'm in a meeting at the moment. His grandfather, Papa Tom Donnelly, married Auntie, uh, Auntie Annie Hamilton. And that make, that brings in the Tanarong. I could still take Tanarong if I wonder, but I've got to take my father's where he was born, which was on the Murray River and his clan. Papa Alex and all them, they come from Uncle William's brother is my grandfather, great grandfather, Bob Cooper. They were all come from the Murray River mob. But on Nanny Sissy's side, that, that comes to Panorong. Uh, the town of Nolly out there, if anyone knows it, out around Bendigo Way. Right? That's named after my non-Indigenous great-great-grandfather. So I'm going to grab a big flag and take the town over. But yeah, I've a ton of wrong, uh, muddy, muddy, ramble, ramble, lucky, lucky, yorty, yorty. Thank, thanks, Uncle Boots. It's so interesting to hear about so many different clans and so much history. And uh, yeah, it's uh, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. I just um, like that. That's you talking about. See if I could see it. Spoke and ceremony, Shane. Oh yes. That's she's on. Your know, she's on country down low, right behind her on the left. Do you know the open fields, Shane? That's where that was. Yeah. That's a beautiful and, picture. And that tree there, that's significant to our mob, Shane. You know that nanny kitty tree. <laughs> But yeah, just yeah. down from the from the uh, ochre fields, that tree there, you can see how big it is, how far the kids are apart. It's about oh, three metres wide around. Uh, that tree is with uh, is uh, significant to us because it was our great great grandmother Nanny Kitty. Shane, like Nanny Kitty, you heard that? There, there was a massacre uh, about a mile or two down the road that way. And her and she was only little, and a few of my other aunties and that ran because they were little. They hid behind that uh, big gum tree and up it, feel it, and uh, the uh, settlers couldn't find them or catch them. And, uh, that's why they call that the Nanny Kitty tree. It saved our grandmother, our great great grandmother, and our great great aunties and uncles. That tree did. Amazing. So if you ever go to Barber, go to Yorta Yorta Lakeships, and they'll do a tour. We've got some beautiful stuff down there that's significant to our culture. On the Barber side, when I went down there, took some kids down. When, when I was young, teenage years, I thought it was made by. The uh, farmers and that big circles. Have you seen them, Shane? The big circles. And uh, I thought, well, I went down again, the Yorta Yorta Lace blocked it off and claimed it. 
it was where all our tribes got together, like Canberra, sit down and discuss the uh, laws and everything of what's happening in the in the uh, surrounding countries owned by different tribes in the Yorta Yorta Nation. It's a beautiful. That's why I love taking the kids down there. Uh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Boots. We'll we'll want to come with you now. You're going to have to take us all there to go and have a look. And that's an amazing, a really amazing tree. Um, For those who don't know, Shane is my blood, blood nephew. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a yorta yorta breed. And a, a great segue to Uncle Shane. Uncle Shane, can you tell us <laughs> yeah, a little bit about yeah. your, <laughs> your, your, your mom too? to my wife on the child side. I relate. Yeah. We all relate. Maybe yeah, yeah. we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so I guess yeah. As Uncle Boot said, you know, through my father and my grandmother, uh, connect back through Yorta Yorta. So you know, through the Moira, yeah. uh, Moira Lake um, clans, as well as the Yalapna Island clans, as well, which is Big further right up closer to, yeah. towards Cobram. So that's a my father's um you know father's side and also on my father's father's side I actually go back through to ben loman in the tasmania yes. um but also connected through to bunarong and Wurundjeri through my grandmother violet mccray briggs so uh that's my connection here to, exactly. to those sides yeah. of the river mum yeah mum's uh <laughs> wamba wamba and, and uh Wiradjuri, which is new south wales so yeah. mum's mob came out of, came out of cow and mission um and then came down then eventually ended up in dash's paddock and oh cameron guns and then dash's paddock between merton and shepparton so i just want to highlight you know where you're on about but at, and i just you know gave that classic example of that only kitty's tree you know has so much narrative when we go out there's so much story there there's so much depth so much feeling yeah. with it you know and that you know, how do we how can we create that locally too you know how can we create this feeling in, in the spaces and places in and around that, you know, that, that communities start to connect with and, and build, you know, their capacity out of or, you know, build that space you know, for their own community. And they're all teaching spaces. Running three-day cultural immersion programs, Leanne, so <laughs> up on country, um, you know, starting with something sec in a couple of weeks. But it's a whole different thing getting away out of you know, out of the office and connecting with the storylines of, of our community, you know, um, and because it's, they're so important to us and we go back to them and, and there's so much narrative that is there for us and feeling. So, you know, and that's, so yeah, and, and I think I've got Scottish and Irish, so I've got a plan to go over and claim both of them because <laughs> we do have that Scottish and Irish connection yes, within very, you know, very our mob because they were ostracised as well. So, we befriended a lot of uh, the Scottish and Irish people. So I've got McGee, McGee and McRae and um, oh, Riley and all sorts of other sort of things, which is interesting. And that's the blood that flows from my veins. But every place I go to when I'm on country, I feel like I've been there before. I feel like I belong there. You know? and, and there's so much stories and, and narrative that comes with it. So. Yeah, I've got Scottish, Irish and uh, English. Yeah, so it's, it's it's so wonderful to hear about all these different family connections and um you know sort of history and it's it, it's mm -hmm. so wonderful to hear about that. Leanne, I'm just wondering whether are you are you comfortable to tell? I'll us make it well? quick. I'll make it quick. <laughs> um, so my mob is Kire Wurrung from Southwest Victoria. Um, so my father's bloodline, uh, Framlingham Mission, so great connection uh, there. But I'm also um, part of a larger nation, which uh, is Gunujimara, but we're sort of, because of the, some of the name changes, we're now Eastern Ma. So I'm part of the Eastern Ma people in which um, Karewarung is uh, our land, basically lies from Ararat, uh, the Port Ferry, Warrnambool, down the Great Ocean Road area. So the 12 Apostles is actually part of, you know, our country. And, yeah, so we're very proud, you know, because we're 
coastal river and land peoples, so to say. So, you know, we have some, you know, beautiful, amazing, significant sites that we are very proud of, you know, in our area. And I think, you know, another part of all that would be around having access to our own country. So, um, you know, there's a lot of private lands now that we can't actually access our own country and things like that. So that sort of comes into the bigger picture around cultural heritage and, you know, us sort of fighting back for, you know, parts of this land that we have rights to, you know. So that's another big sort of area of it. But, yeah, I'll keep it short. <laughs> Thanks. I, it, it connects into so many different pieces, doesn't it, Leanne? Thank you for sharing that. And thank you, everybody, for sharing the, those those sort of stories and histories because I think sometimes, you know, from the outside, we may think of Aboriginal people as one people and um, what you've shared with us shows us the many different sort of nations and histories and cultures that, that, that all people have. So it's wonderful for, to, to hear about that too. Um, I'm just moving just, on. Yeah, to... Leah, just before we move forward. Sure. Yeah, I guess there's, you know, important thing there, uh, learning, and that is, you know, when we meet Aboriginal people, um, you know, when we meet, we, we, we say, well, who are you and where are you from? So there's that, there's that, you know, physical geographic location, but then there's these, you know, all these, these, these you know, storylines I guess in terms of you know because of colonization you know we need to know who you are and I need to know who you are you need to know who I am so we established that connection first the, the geographic connection and then you know oh okay who's your mom all right so that's that's that whole sharing of 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 knowing you know when we meet so we can be anywhere and and you know you build the connection straight away because you know that of families of families or you're connected to to their mob or whatever so there's yeah that's one of the first things we do yeah it's a wonderful practice isn't it to get to know people um i'm i'm just wondering does anybody have any questions that they'd like to shout out we've got about another five minutes i do have more questions here but if anyone has any follow-ups here please um call out or you can put the question in the chat as well. Is there anything? No? Okay. But please uh, do. Oh, yes. Yeah. Nguyen, thank yeah. you. How do you actually spell the clan names? What was that? How do you spell the clan names? Like, you're, you're, uh, <laughs> like, we're going to, uh, you're you're the body 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 I wonder if we should uh, provide those afterwards um, written. It's probably easier than yeah. spelling them out right now. Because we we'll, we'll need another hour for that, <laughs> there, Jasmine. Is that okay? All right, we'll take that on as a we'll we'll get we'll we'll take that on and get that through. Um, I, I'll also just mention too while we're here that actually the um, Brimbank Aquatic and Wellness Centre is about to open, and there's going to be seven rooms named after with Aboriginal names. And actually, um, our members of BATSIC, many of um, uh, who are here today, uh, you know, worked with us to um, help identify name room names both in the Wurundjeri language which is the location where the um, book sits, but also in languages from their own um, nations as well, so that we could represent also the, you know, cultural diversity of uh, our Aboriginal com communities who live here in Brimbank too. So please keep an eye out for that when it comes, when it comes up. Um, I might just go to one last question. Let's see what we can um, do quickly. Yeah, uh, I get that question a Thanks, lot. Yeah. Uh, I got it's the status of an older. <laughs> you tell them, mate. <laughs> Suki, stop. There, see. So sorry, boots. <laughs> He's trying to tell me, yeah, you speak up on speech. What's an elder? 
But yeah, I get that question a lot. Elder. Well, to me, an elder is, it's not something to go to school and get it through school and that. It's some, I, I tell them, I said, you can't just stand on the corner and put your hand up saying, I want to be an elder. I got mobs, my uh, cousins who are around my age and maybe older than me by a year or two. He says, how come you're an elder? And I'm not. If, uh, an elder to me is a person who stands up for the community. Who's, who's, it's like a prime minister, if you like me to say, put it in that term, an elder. An elder ain't, a, ain't a, you know, because you get old, you're an elder, you know, and you do good work. The status and the, the status and the, uh, what you call it, of being an elder comes, this is my opinion of it, comes with what you do with your mob, with your, uh, with your community. And, you know, standing up for your community, supporting them, getting stuff together to help them. Like when we were, when we first started fostering, me and, me and Joyce, we used to, well, my two kids were teenagers. Then I'd wake up in the morning. Luckily, we had a big five-bedroom house. There'd be about 15 kids laying in there, my nieces and nephews. And with that, we'd get the kids and take them back over and help the mob, help the families, which would be our families, help the families get back on top of themselves, you know. They probably were broken down and just that's why the kids are out and about looking for families to uh, couch surf and that. But we busted our rear ends to help the local community and our families and did what we did was best for them. We'd go and just get all the support for them, speak for them. Uh, we'd go to court for them, sit down and just and, and probably through all what we've done for the community over the years through our fostering and helping families, that give me, they, the community give me the status of an elder because, you know, you do wonderful there, too. You know, you deserve a uh, title. <laughs> and they give us, me and Joyce, that title of being an elder through what we did. We fostered over 30 years when we worked with the Aboriginal Child Care Agency. 88 kids over 30 years we fostered. And uh, we'd sit down with the families of the kids we fostered and try and help them and talk to them. And uh, I think we might have been three back when we come an elder and the, the council. But yeah, that to me, that's what an elder does. And that's the, to get that title, uh, it's something that you don't fight, you don't strive to do. It's something that just comes out of your heart and you're helping the community. And uh, that's what being it means to be an elder to me. Someone who really puts their heart and soul into helping the community. Thank you so much, Uncle Boots. And it's a, a really it's a really um, earned title and uh, We'll, we, we unfortunately don't have time to go around to our other elders to ask the same question, but we might be able to gather some other reflections afterwards and share that in another way. Um, I'm sorry, I yapped on. See, Shane, that's in the blood. <laughs> um, so, uh, and, and Men, when I, I'm sure you've noticed that in the um, chat, some of our um, BATSIC uh, members have been uh, providing the written names of their, their cultures and languages. So that's fantastic too. We'll, we'll pull that all together outside of here. But we are over time. And so that'll bring us to the end of today's event. I'd like to say a real massive thank you to our BATSIC guests for again being here today and bravely answering all the questions that we asked of them. It's always an absolute pleasure to listen to your firsthand experience and to learn more about our national history and culture. I'd also like to thank all the staff members who've contributed to organising today's session, in particular, Jamie Lee, Mel and Wambui 
And to everyone who asked questions, this would not have been possible without your input, so thank you. And finally, I want to thank everyone to att for attending today's Indigenous Literacy Day event and for taking the time out of your day to learn more about our shared histories. So please, let's all go out and make change by listening to and celebrating the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander stories, cultures and languages that surround us. So our Zoom session's concluded. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for attending and have a wonderful day. And if you would like us to do another session like this, let us know. If you have any questions, come over to um, you know, ask your questions to Wambui or Jamie Lee, and uh, we'll love to hear from you. And uh, keep an eye out for a whole lot of really great resources as well about BATSICA that are going to be coming up online, including wonderful um, bios of our BATSIC members and uh, very soon a lovely video as well with Uncle Boot. So thanks everyone and we'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you very much. You're welcome.